Hey, what's up, guys? We have a GOT round 64 playoff match between iPro and uh, Ace of Base. He's the Anaheim Altarias, and I'm sure you can figure out iPro if you just you know, use your eyes. I'm joined today with Dark Devil, also known as Brendan. What's up, guys? It's a pleasure to be commentating this playoff match here. And disclaimer before we start, we just want to apologize. I know you guys wanted this game to be live combat. Technical difficulties and other circumstances prevented that. But we hope you enjoy the post com yeah, so we have the two teams right here. We're just going to be going over that really quick. Here's Ace of Base's team. Looks like Gen 6 hyper offense, basically. Uh, yep. even, it, it actually, like, straight up does. I, I actually really like his team. I just hate Goth because it's bullshit-ass Pokemon. But Yeah, I like his team, too. And looking at first glance, it's looking like Ace's biggest threat on the opposition is definitely going to be that Clefable because... Looking at the Clefable, maybe it'll run like an unaware set, maybe it'll run Magic Guard, which will be really annoying for Ferrothorn, but if it runs unaware, that Thunderous, if it runs Nasty Plot, or that Latios, if it runs Calm Mind, or Volcarona, if it runs Quiver he has so much setup on his team that it could just potentially be nullified by unaware Clefable. As well as, depending on what moves Clefable runs, we don't know how Ace here is going to handle that Clefable. But looking at Ace's team here, he definitely has a lot of hard hitters like the Lope Honey, like the Azumarill, Volcarona, Thunderous, Latias. It just goes on and on how much hype, hyper offense that Ace has. It's ridiculous. Yeah, um, looking at some of the things he did, didn't bring, like uh, like Dawnfan and Goth, or some of the things, the only two things he didn't bring. Those things are still really good solid Pokemon in general. Gothitelle is able to trap and remove stuff. Thereby forcing things like Shed Shell when you want to be running like Rocky Helmet or a Life Orb or something like that on one of your Exactly. Pokemon. Now it is very underrated Rapid Spinner in you know, a draft tier format because it has a ton of coverage and it has like good solid bulk and you know a good typing for it too. As it's, someone who's used Don Fan before, it's really interesting what Don Fan could do. Like Don Fan doesn't even just have to be a Rapid Spinner. Don Fan could also be a really solid Choice Banded user. It gets amazing coverage, like Gunk Shot, it gets Fire Fang for Steel types, like Ferrothorn, it gets Earthquake, Ice Shard, you name it. Don yeah. Fan will probably get coverage for that. Sea Bomb, Bounce, you know, it, this thing could actually be a good Z-Move user. <laughs> yeah, it really would. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, Ace is actually in the MPL minor, so iPro here is going to have uh, definitely a worthy opponent and a big test ahead of him because of the fact that Ace is in such a very competitive league which means we already know that ace is a very competitive player so why don't you talk about ipro's team a little bit and i will so here's ipro's team it's looking like really like bulky offense in general we have like a you know obviously zygarde 50 it's a definition of bulky offense clef a good pivot and just a good fairy type in general zapdos really bulky offense Ferrothorn for the rocks, spikes, that type of thing. Nidoqueen, Queen, more bulky offense. Mega Gyarados, bulky. Yeah, just bulky offense straight through. And he also has his own Gothitelle. <laughs> so you I already think, know both think, of these scum lords will be trapping each other. Not really. Exactly. I think iPro is going to be heavily leaning on his Clefable, like I said, because just looking at the Clefable, if it's an unaware variant, just looking at it, it stops a lot of Ace's setup. I can also see iPro. Definitely fearing the Mega Low Pony because honestly, Mega Low Pony is such a stupid broken Pokemon. Am I right? It gets coverage out the wazoo. It's just a really good Pokemon in general. Hits really hard, so it's going to be very difficult for iPro to play around that Mega Low Pony just because of the coverage it gets, like the good normal stab it gets, like high jump kick. But what something that Ace has to look out for is that Ferrothorn likes to run protect. So if Low Pony wants to go for the high jump kick, he has to be very careful and predict. He might Whether not or not have he to wants if he's to running go protect or not. He might not have to. We'll open he gets Fire Punch. That is true. I have a bad memory in case you guys are not aware. Uh, Yelp. Oh, yeah. Um, some things that I pro have to worry about, though, is obviously the hyper offense that the uh, Ace of Base brought. He also has Zemu Volcarona, which is able to break through like an unaware Clefable if he were Exactly. And mm -hmm. he also has a, you know, he has a Zygarde to help check it, but I'm sure he has some type of like Z move to handle both Clef and Zygarde. <laughs> Shadow Psyche. <laughs> so in other other news, Heracross absolutely decimates his team, if used correctly. Yes, so, Heracross absolutely Scarf. runs through his team, especially if he's choice Garf. With only things like um, Azumarill to be able to check it. He has Healing Wish on Latias, maybe. 
healing wish on low punny maybe probably not but otherwise azu's is only like really good check as volcarona is not a solid check it gets like i'm pretty sure to a ko'd by a yeah because volcarona has not very good defenses and even though azumarill is a pretty good check if heracross gets enough moxie boosts up that Azumarill is going to have a very, very bad time. So he has to take out that Heracross as soon as humanly possible before it gets Moxie Boost out the wazoo, and then Ace would have a pretty bad time because Heracross, as we all know, is a threat. Now, me personally, I love Heracross. I just know how much damage Heracross can do, and Ace has to be very careful of Heracross. So I must ask, what do you see as the potential leads in this game? Alright, so um, I'd say it's a pretty fail-safe lead for the anti military just lead a little punny. And just, you know, fake out if he has it, you know, get his mega off and just do some damage. That, that type of stuff. If he wants to get his mega off right away, which doesn't really help him out, to be honest. He doesn't gain any resistances by doing that. But it's just, you know, nice getting your mega off. Otherwise, if he wants to counter lead, he can just lead full Corona. As that also has a pretty good matchup against everything. And I can definitely see iPro either leading off with his Clefable, or he could potentially even lead off with his Zapdos, depending on what set that Zapdos is. Just by looking at his team, that's definitely a default Zapdos. But if for some weird reason, say he's like a fast bolt switch variant, he could even lead off with Zapdos because he has no ground immunities on his team. So he could just bolt switch if he doesn't like the lead matchup and then just go into something else. But I definitely see iPro leading off with that Clefable. Or even Ferrothorn. Nido Queen's going to be a huge issue for the Altarius too, as it just has the bulk to be able to take a lot of hits, like from like Low Punny, for instance, and also Thunderous. It's mm -hmm. to the main stab, and the only other thing to go for is like HP Ice, or yeah, just HP Ice. Speaking of Thunderous, though, it also does a lot to uh, Ipro's team because it can just run something like you know Thunderbolt, HP Ice, Incinerate, and it's able to hit pretty much everything at least neutrally or super effectively on Ipro's team. That he brought exactly exactly so it's been a long enough wait let's hop right into this guys yep all right uh, i started i'm more turning so as you can see ace leads off with his latias and i pro leads off with his clefable so already ace is already in a pretty bad position so as you can see ace actually chooses to go for psychic and he reveals the hidden power so what type of hidden power do you think that could be <sighs> it's not fire for um it's yeah, it's not fire, fire for it. sure because not the Latias not resisting it. Yeah, so in the video I said it's not HP fire. Well, don't even listen because I fucking I already know, I already know. I get it, I get it, I get it. It gets flamethrower, I know. Don't don't roast me, please don't don't roast me. I also say some other stupid shit later in the video. You probably understand if you see it. Don't roast me there either. I swear I know these shit. I know my shit. I I am a, prof a professional Pokemon player. So, yeah, so I'm thinking it's HP rock potentially for Volcarona. Yeah, HP rock for Volcarona, that is a pretty good guess. Because, as we all know, Volcarona pretty much walls Clefable otherwise, so HP Rock is a pretty good guess. But that Psychic did a lot of damage, and as you can see, that Latias was indeed life orb. so that's definitely a problem for Ipro because he's going to have a hard time switching out now that his Clefable has taken some damage. Yeah, and it took way too much too, even like just on... This is a Latias, it's not that strong, it's, it's alright, but it's not like great or anything. Oh, yeah, and need... the amount of damage that Clefable took from the Psychic, that means it's automatically, like, not a specially defensive variant. He's definitely, like, mixed defensive, or he could even be, like, offensive, too. Yeah, he... we actually asked afterward, and it is indeed Life Orb Clefable, but with, like, weird, some, like, weird spread of mixed defense. So it's probably, like, more physically defensive, and then obviously has a lot of special attack pumped into it, I'm sure. And that just means uh, Psychic would, you know, to a KO, because... My for Bladia, stab, all that shit, and hitting Clef on its probably uninvested special side. Or exactly. at least. Mm -hmm. So now know. going into the next turn, we can see Ipro here switching into the Ferrothorn as it eats up Psychic, takes more life orb damage, and we do not see the leftovers on the Ferrothorn as he goes into the Volcarona, which was a pretty safe switch, but unfortunately Ipro misses the Toxic, so that Toxic miss was actually pretty bad because of the fact that, well, he went to Volcarona, and we now know that he could be forced to switch out because, as we all know, Volcarona completely obliterates the 
Ferrothorn in every single way, shape, and form and can even set up with Quiver Dances. So that's really bad for iPro to deal with. And as we have just seen, I'm on turn six, by the way. Are you on turn six? Getting there. Okay. Well, on turn six, iPro, you know, as you can see, he set up a substitute on the Ferrothorn. That's that's good. That was a good play on his part. I mean, if he if Ferrothorn was packing some type of rock move, like, I think he gets Rock Slide. Well, he could scout for it, then he could just switch out into probably, like, uh, maybe his own Ferrothorn and get rocks up or has some kind of hazard up. Although that invites him getting his own hazards up. Maybe go back in the Latias and HP Fire if he has it. We don't know. I don't. I don't really know uh, if he did carry rock move coverage. It probably would have surprised him a little. Yeah, Speaking and as you can see there, he revealed the Savage spin out on the Zygarde, and the Zygarde just completely evaporated. Like it was there, and it just now it's gone. So, good bring on Ace's part to bring the Savage spin out for the Z move, as honestly. It really doesn't hit anything other than the Zygarde, so I'm not quite sure what he brought the Savage spin out for. Probably, I mean, I haven't memorized the Zygarde. teams. Yeah, probably for Zygarde. As that's, you know, obviously that'd be the but, hardest hitting move he has for it. Yeah, it seemed probably... to do its job, which, yeah, it did its job, did knock out the Zygarde. So, as you can see, though, that Volcarona set up a sub, which is really, really bad for iPro there. Um, in going back to a few turns before when Lattice has taken that life orb damage, that's actually that would have been really nice damage for uh, maybe like a banded side guard E speed sweep later. Yeah, as that could also definitely happen with this team. However, now that Zygarde's gone, <laughs> we don't have to worry about that. I guess it might be in Sucker Punch range of Nidoqueen if Nidoqueen's packing that, but we don't know yet. We will see. Yep, all right. So, Queen just went for Rock Slide on the um. Fire Blast miss, and you know, broke the sub. He, and then he switched out in the Latias. Yeah, so that's what turned him on. Yep. So then, as you can see, Latias ends up going for another Psychic on the Ferrothorn as the Ferrothorn switches in, but then he reveals the HP Fire Akaberry and he does crit the HP Fire on the Ferrothorn, which is good because obviously the Ferrothorn lives and he's obviously going to get off a Toxic and the Ferrothorn is unfortunately going to go down but along with the Latias because of the Toxic slash Life Orb damage so it's a double down there and then Ace will go to his Volcarona Ipro goes to his Heracross and now obviously Ace has to fear the Scarf Heracross here and getting obliterated by a Stone Edge which he, predict he correctly predicts and goes into the Ferrothorn now he's able to get Hazards up Assuming it is Scarf Haircross. If it isn't Scarf Haircross and it kills Ferrothorn, well, it's not much of a threat. He instead, however, goes for Gyro Ball, trying to get that chip damage off, I suppose, on Nidoqueen. Yeah, or, like, or, or... he could have went for Hazards there. I mean, he still has a Zapdos on his team, so... But going for Chip is still okay because of the fact that, well, Chip is Chip. It can come in handy. You never know when Chip can come in handy. But as you can see, Ace just decides to go for the Leech Seed here to Leech Seed that Nidoqueen as now he is going to go into the Clefable on the Ferrothorn. But as you can see, he's going to go for the Soft Boiled here, trying to recover some health. And as you can see, that Gyrable actually does a lot of damage. So, yeah, let's we talk don't know. Really let's talk about this. We, like we said, this Clefable set gave us some... What's the word I'm looking for? It gave us a little bit of a hard time. We tried to figure out what this Clefable set was until we asked iPro what it was. We ran a lot of calcs, so we tried to figure out what exactly this Clefable was. It could have been a defensive life orb variant, which it actually ended up being. It could have been fully offensive. It just could have gotten a low roll. That could have been especially defensive Ferrothorn. The possibilities were endless. Yeah, I was I was even throwing out things like offensive, or, or not offensive, but had attack investment on Ferrothorn to, to be able to hit Clef harder or something like that, because that just took way too much. Even if it was like a, like a bulky spread, it would have only taken like... 40 something on average I, I can't remember the calc exactly and see so yeah, this yeah this clefable spread definitely yeah. gave us a little bit of a challenge coming up with the spread so as you can see though i pro then decides to fire off a fire blast and ferrothorn actually lives the hit which made me suspicious of clefable being life orb and as you can see ferrothorn is actually going to take out the clefable with the gyro ball and iPro is going to go into a Zapdos the next turn, and he's going to actually miss a Heat Wave, which is very, very unfortunate. 
a very unfortunate heat wave miss. What do you think? Oh yeah, the, if that heat wave connected, Scarf Heracross might have been able to do something because. Well, yeah, would... because as we all know, and we actually don't even know Heracross's ability yet. So maybe what he could have done was he just could have choiced himself into close combat. He could have choiced himself into close combat, killed the Ferrothorn, he would have gotten a Volcarona and potentially gotten a Guts boost. But we don't know if he was Moxie or Guts yet. So, but if he was Moxie, he would just. Volcarona, as we all know, doesn't have the best defense. So we don't know if a close combat would have potentially taken out that Volcarona with a plus one attack. Or if he didn't get the plus one attack boost, he could potentially get the Guts boost from Volcarona. But then he could just easily go to Azu if he was indeed a like a moxie or guts variant but if he was a guts variant then yeah he just went to azu but that none of that happened and none of that matters because of the heat wave miss more likely than not though he is the moxie set he was carrying stone edge for volcarona so a doesn't touch it and b just flat kills it exactly so yeah he was most likely a moxie variant but unfortunately we don't get to see that because heat wave miss so no it's it's actually really bad because let's say well, I mean, we know Azu is gonna be carrying Aqua Jet, right? We, we, it, we, exactly. we can assume that. Exactly. Um, I, I don't know if it's gonna be an assumption that Low Plane is gonna be carrying a uh, Fake out anymore because of the speed buff that it got this chin. You know, with all other Megas, I guess it would be usually a buff, sometimes a debuff. But Low Plane may or may not be carrying Fake out. If it is carrying Fake out, then he could stall out and just sack Pokemon and kill a exactly. that way, and then put in range of Aqua Jet maybe. Exactly. But, you know, he missed. And Fer and the reason why I say Ferrothorn misses is uh, kind of big is because, you know, Ferrothorn is Iron Barbs, therefore, you know, taking extra damage that he wouldn't have had to take. If see, he uh, that miss is definitely going to hurt iPro, and we will see later on in the match if that miss truly comes to bite iPro in the ass. So, as you can see here, he's going to go into his Volcarona and pretty much just sack that off to another Heat Wave as the Zapdos reveals its leftovers. And he's then going to go into his Thunders, and he is going to reveal the nasty plot, which is just terrible, terrible news for iPro. As he he's going to go for Thunderbolt, but honestly, with the Leech Seed and the nasty plot up, it's looking like that Ace here is going to clean up the game with the nasty plot Thunder sweep. But he is going to go into his Scarf Heracross. He definitely expected that, and he's just going to go to his Azumarill. But that nasty plot play pretty much just sealed the deal in my opinion as he's just going to switch to Azu. Azu actually reveals leftovers which is pretty interesting so it'll be interesting to see what kind of Azu set this was. Probably much of a bulkier spread. I mean obviously Azu yeah. would always be bulky but I guess he wanted leftovers because it would be able to take hits otherwise with that residual uh, health is getting back. Yeah so in my opinion though that nasty plot thunder is pretty much just sealed the game because his Heracross was forced to go for a move that didn't miss obviously and could take out the thunder so he had the free switch into azu and he just went he took advantage of his opportunity he went to azu and now he has all the momentum in the game right now now here uh on turn 24 he switches out his azu when obviously jet will kill um and went to ferrothorn that makes that could mean one of two things he either doesn't have jet and he doesn't want to take a sludge wave or he was fearing maybe maybe he was fearing like sucker punch and nitto queen and that would put him in range of uh, a mega horn or close combat from heracross or something like that maybe which... he predicted the uh paso berry maybe he was a berry no but i i highly doubt it he that, was a berry but that would have taken him out anyways he was only at like 20. oh he already wait he already went for aqua jet so nope berry would have oh. nope oh yeah nope. he already went for jet so yeah I... <laughs> he went for the jet the turn before. Wow. Well, uh... <laughs> Don't worry, guys. We're good players. We know what we're talking about. It's okay. <laughs> I, I, I guess he didn't want to take helmet damage too. So I can understand since you know he already revealed helmet. I just completely skipped over that turn in my head. It was never Trust mind. Me. That that explains Trust it. helmet. Me. Yep. So, yeah. Maybe As you can see, though, going on in the match, like he switches out his Ferrothorn and he's gonna reveal the Super Fang, which is pretty interesting. So he definitely wanted to whittle down that Azu as soon as possible because the Azu is a really, really big threat to his team because obviously Heracross is walled by it, etc. Well, now he goes on to his low punny predicting, you know, some, I don't know, fire move or, you know, some kind of like maybe not Super Fang because Super Fang would have killed the Ferrothorn and he would have just died along with it. 
So he goes on to his slow pony, gets a mega off, returns, and kills. Yep. And then he's going to go into his Heracross here, and he's obviously going to have to lock himself into a move if he has any chance of winning this game that hits every Pokemon on Ace's side. And he chooses to lock himself into Mega Horn. So he locks himself into Mega Horn. Unfortunately, the Mega Horn does not kill the Little Punny, and the Little Punny is going to kill this Heracross with a return. And Ace is going to pick up a 4 0 victory against iPro. Yeah, um, there was some hacks involved. I mean, like, I suppose the Heat Wave miss mattered. Yeah, Heat bit, Wave miss definitely sucked. It sucked, but at the same time, the Ozu was also healthy. I don't know how that endgame would have been different if Heat Wave were to hit. I guess Zapdos would be healthier because it wouldn't have taken lead C for one. And that way it would be able to, like, maybe defog or something. I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, like, it's impossible to tell what that Heat Wave miss affected the game. Or in that fact, like, anything like would have affected the game. But hacks or no hacks, Ace pulls out the 4-0 victory. He's going to advance to the round of 32. I'm not sure if he knows his opponent yet or not. I have no he idea. I don't. I haven't looked at the bracket at all, but he can celebrate and worry about his round of 32 opponent another time. For now, he's won the day, and he is going to advance to the round of 32. So, congrats to Ace on advancing. Very good game, unfortunately, very hacksy, but that's just well, the game we play, people. Well, I mean, the fire blast miss earlier meant that uh, Volcarona could just sweep right then and there. So. Exactly. Maybe. So go, it went both ways this match. Very hacky game in general. But again, it's just the game we play. Yeah, that's true. Could have said it better myself. All right, so guys, we'll see you guys. Uh, yeah, peace out, guys. Time. Hope you enjoyed our commentary. And we hope you enjoyed the rest of the GOT. So peace out.